Hello, everyone. I'm Crisanto Mukaso, independent scholar from the Philippines. My paper is titled From Hollywood Films to Pelikulang Filipino or Filipino Cinema, Scoring Early Filipino Motion Pictures. The smooth migration of Sarsuela from the stage to cinema was the corollary of guaranteed audiences. In this paper, I will unravel the cross-bordering of Hollywood and local music scoring to focalize the Filipinoness of local cinema. It will examine how the conflict of diegesis can be resolved sonically through hybridity and intertextual references of cues. Inquiries on the importance of incorporating folk songs, condiments, and other local music genres, as well as the various music ensembles used in the diegetic and extra diegetic tones of cinema, are requisite to comprehend the cross bordering of music from Hollywood to local. Inference on various social classes as consumers of film for entertainment is equally important in the pursuit to understand the dynamics of film music production during and shortly after the Second World War. Moreover, Sociocultural perspectives directed to spectators in the given time frame will also be scrutinized to give light on its development to the present context. The success of motion pictures in the Philippines can be traced to the masses uh, foundness of sarsuelas or local Spanish uh, sarsuelas. At the time of silent films, sarsuela actors dominated the major roles in every film exhibited. Their talent were vital in the creation and production of films where singing and dancing are inseparable. It may be construed that cinema was meant to flourish due to the Sarsuela actors and the existing Sarsuela libretti turned into films. These early motion pictures were never really silent because of the presence of Sarsuela actors and musicians during the screening of films to provide the live music track and heightening the experience of the moviegoers. This practice attracted more audiences during screenings. When films with soundtrack arrived in 1929, also known as talkies, sarsuela actors continued to dominate cinema. This time around, filmgoers see and hear their favorite actors perform, though devoid of their physical presence during the screenings. That being said, talkies affected the livelihood of musicians accompanying live the screenings of films because the need for their services now ceased. Nevertheless, Film scorers brought it as the need to create music track for the entire film became a necessity. The success of sound films at the box office also benefited movie theme songs recorded in vinyl. Apparently, with the coming of film sound, the theoretical Zarazuela began to fade, unable to counter the lure of its motion picture rival. In retrospect, the advent of motion pictures in the country at the turn of the 20th century added to the existing forms of entertainment for both local and foreign film viewers. Cinema may be considered as one of the last contributions of colonial Spain to the country. However, the credit eventually went to the new colonizers, the Americans. Due to the advancements in Hollywood films, the notion that motion picture originally introduced by the Americans emerged. In 1929, the film Syncopation arrived from the Hollywood and changed the cinematic experience of film viewers. Apparently, the audio was not as good as expected due to the nascent technology used. The recorded sound was played through a phonograph synchronically during film screening. This method was attempted by a local filmmaker, Hussein Pomusano, before, but he was unsuccessful because of lip sound synchronization issues. As a result, the spoken words were garbled and incomprehensible. However, the second film, Showboat, arrived with satisfactory audiovisual reproduction, marking the birth of talkie in the country. With soundtrack being part of the film, the dialogues can now be heard and understood easily. Technicolor produced this American film and became an instant box office hit in the country, although it was also regarded as a threat to locally produced films. In the same year, Leon Britton, a British engineer, shipped the sound equipment into the country only a few months apart from the launching of syncopation. Silent films and talkies were exhibited simultaneously shortly until the demise of the former in 1932. Silent films continued to be re-exhibited, but the genre ceased operating eventually. The continued screen of numerous Hollywood films in the country somehow standardized every aspect in the production of films. Local film scorers started to compose music for the orchestra, like in Hollywood. 
musicians perform and recorded the music track live during the taping of the films, while the theme songs of movies were recorded separately and sold as final records as well. These theme songs reverberated on radios and heard in all corners of the country to promote the films and the recorded single or album. This trend was also beneficial to print music business since the demand for copies of sheet music for consumers was directly proportional to the success of each film. Indeed, no matter how strong the hegemonic influence of Hollywood in local films, filmmakers started creating films of substance tailored to the taste of local moviegoers. One factor that directly affected this move was the staggering production cost to create a Hollywood-like cinema. This was not limited to the cost of producing props, costumes, and staff and talent uh, payroll. Orchestral ensemble were also much smaller as opposed to the symphonic orchestra that Hollywood utilized in scoring its film music tracks. Another factor, more importantly, was the lacking Filipino ness in local films. Though the actors may be locals, the subject, diegesis, and music track are foreign like a direct replica of Hollywood productions. Filmmakers started to think deeper as they prepared to create their next film. Thus, they focused on the impact of their next film to their spectators. May it be the moral lesson from societal, normative, or the inkling of patriotic themes throughout the film. Most of the time, these were inseparable. Nick De Ocampo, a renowned Filipino filmmaker and film historian of this generation, resists Hollywood taste in the 1950s uh, films, but applauds the achievement of the first international filmmaker, Manuel Conde, whose 1950 film, Genghis Khan, received international recognition in the 1952 Venice Film Festival and an invitation to the Edinburgh Film Festival in 1953. Filmmakers began to resolve themes about clashing Western and local ideologies. This is traceable of Charles Taylor's notion of social imaginary where people critically analyze how they fit together in the society. A country that has been colonized multiple times sure has numerous unresolved ideologies. An example of diagesis in an earlier film is the clash between modernity and tradition. The ideology that modernity is the key to success or improvement. However, this was opposed by the ideology that the roots of the society should never be forgotten to preserve society's identity. This was the scenario during the time when the society was divided due to their respective differing ideologies. Through cinema, filmmakers imagine a society that accepts both ideologies to end the feud between the clashing groups. An ingenious way to resolve this issue at that time was for the spectators to see the hybridization visually as well as sonically. In Filipino Costume No Touch or Filipino Custom No Touch 1955 film, a sequence where traditional and modern dancers started pairing with each other to dance blissfully while the traditional ensemble or andaya played simultaneously with the big band is an example. During this time, the hegemonic power of the American culture was in question by those who were afraid that customs and traditions might disappear totally once the society fully embraces modernity. Sonically, the big band performs in common time while they're in Dali in triple time. Aside from hybridizing the score with tone color, the rondale also plays to the common time when they join the big band in the performance. This union is symbolic of the possibility for coexistence. The tradition will never be forgotten, even when it welcomes modernity. While Hollywood film scores composed country music to sonically transcend spectators regarding the place of time in the diegesis of a film, local film scores composed condiments, included folk tunes and other local themes. On the one hand, it was trend then to hear these types of musics when there are rural or rustic scenes, while a lively big band music on the other hand in cityscapes. This practice also meant to promote patriotism to local spectators for when they hear what is native to their ears, they embrace the moment even better. Also in Hollywood films, stingers and short musical cues were used to accentuate scenes or moments to heighten the emotion of the viewers. However, local film music scorers also used cues to deliver subliminal messages. They were even given roles as an actant. Again, in the 1955 film, Filipino custom No Touch, the heart of the protagonist, Arturo, is represented by a bass drum. In this film, Arturo's heart can talk like a human being, though sometimes only the bass drum talks to him and to the spectators. 
this actant role of a sonic entity is an effective way to indirectly inform the spectators to listen to their hearts when deciding to settle down. Another example where music serves as an actant in cinema can be witnessed in the 1941 film Evil Adana or Adana Bird. In the sequence where the enchanted bird sings a song supposedly to put its catcher in deep sleep, then defecates onto the latter to turn him into a stone. The tone color of instruments needs to be scrutinized. In this cue, there are three main music sources, the voice of a soprano, a flute, and celesta. These three music sources create the hypnotic lullaby in the scene. The coloratura's voice is a personification of the singing bird. Consequently, it also represents a mother singing a lullaby to her baby. The flute sound mimics the bird's singing and the sound of the music box represented by the sound of a celesta is another metaphor for lullaby music. These three music sources were utilized to weave a narrative magical cue in putting one into sleep, constant element throughout the film. In the encounter of the protagonist and the enchanted bird, the absence of the sound of the music box conveys failure to turn the protagonist into stone. The absence of the music box sound in the song of Adarna negates the supposedly deadly effect of the song. It's lost in the other song sources for the lullaby meant the breaking of the deadly spell that puts one to sleep and eventually into stone. However, the presence of the music box sound in the final enchantment encounter towards the last sequence of the film creates a reverse effect onto the spell casted on the protagonist. This time, the presence of the music box sound and the absence of the other music sources becomes a prosthesis in bringing the protagonist back to his senses. The aforementioned examples are traceable to Hollywood, but were hybridized and localized to fit the local diegesis for the local spectators to comprehend directly or indirectly. Cinema, since its arrival in the country, had its audiences from various social classes. Those belonging to the upper classes paid for the first class seats, while the lower classes settled with the second class seats for a cheaper price. According to Augustine Soto, the masses were discriminately treated in film viewings due to the exorbitant ticket pricing. He posits that in Petiela Salon, ticket prices were steep with first class seats selling at two pesos, the second class at one peso. Only the Spaniards and their wealthy native friends could afford admission. Even then, the natives were permitted to buy only the second-class tickets. According to Arwin Tan, one peso is equivalent to approximately 1,128 pesos and 40 centavos, or $20.16 nowadays. Filmmakers knew that they can influence spectators of mixed classes in a theater through the films they create. Thus, cinema as a tool to influence spectators can be very powerful if done properly and studied carefully. As a result, propaganda films were also shown, especially during the Second World War. The Japanese conquerors labeled local films as poor imitation of Hollywood and pushed for censorship. Film was used as war propaganda during the Japanese occupation to delineate the ideals of the colony to topple American ideologies and cultural imperialism. Censorship was done not just on films, but on other forms of media, such as radio, news, theater, etc. as well. After the war, local films started to thrive once more, which eventually led to the golden age of cinema in the country. The hegemony of Hollywood films is ingrained in cinemas around the world, not only because of the budget spent on a project, but also because of the overall aspects vital in the creation of films. This hegemony has long been felt in the Philippines since the onset of this popular art form and entrenched deeper in the country as a result of the occupation. Nevertheless, filmmakers had tried to negotiate and respond to this hegemony through hybridity and localization. Local filmmakers learned to create an original out of the norms of Hollywood. They embraced the ways of Hollywood to create local cinema that can be enjoyed by the varying social classes. They have imagined a society where everyone can fit for they share the same ideologies, whether hybridized and uh, localized or not. This vision was carried through the diegesis, the images, and the music heard by the spectators of cinema. Apparently, the music track of our current cinema, if I may say, is regressing. 
current local music scorers compose music as if wanting their spectators to experience Hollywood music alone. This may be dictated by the market due to the current taste of spectators. In spite of everything that were done by the music scorers to negotiate with the hegemonic power of Hollywood back then, current scorers seem to negate what has been achieved. Perhaps critical assessment and creation of music track must be part of each school offering film studies in the country. That way, budding film scorers could use their craft as an instrument for change. Thank you.